Okay. Um, so yes, some materials, processes, and qualities of my studio. Um, so a brief kind of uh, screenshot of my studio, just to kind of set the basis, I guess, for some of the materials and machines that I work with. Um, so in the center of my studio, you can see a uh, cast aluminum sculpture. Um, you'll see how these kind of feed into my print and again, my sculpture practice shortly on in the presentation. Uh, to the right of that, there's just a small, but I guess a quite large uh, wax sculpture. This is actually at the foundry being cast into bronze now, but on the left-hand side, you can just, I guess it's half of it's cropped off, but you can see one of the 3D printing machines that I built a meter and a half by a meter and a half in all dimensions. And I use this to extrude porcelain into molds uh, moving through into wax and then into bronze. And then in the drawers below, you can just see some of the etching. So this is my kind of main, I guess, entry point onto the, the residency and working with some of the tech that is available uh, there. Um, again, moving into tech. Uh, so just as a kind of brief overview of a, a project I completed before the residency, just to kind of give an overview of my workflow. So this, uh, a full body motion capture suit uh, which is what I'm pictured wearing here. It's got sensors at each kind of, I guess, point of movement on the on the body. Um, and then I 3D scanned myself, hooked it up to the motion capture suit, and I was wearing the motion capture suit whilst operating a fax machine. It was a very simple study of just a man at work, man at machine. Um, and that was going to be the starting point for the body of work that's to follow. So this body of work, uh, which consists of sculptures and prints, is called, we'll burn that bridge when we get to it. So this was one of the early monotypes that I started making from that body of work. Again, you can start to see, I guess the figure on the left is almost starting to operate the fax machine. And then as he moves from the left to the right, you can see his arms begin to raise and he begins to load the paper, press the buttons and operate this machine. Um, so it was at this point that I started to become particularly interested in how the use of emerging technology can kind of lead to these emerging qualities being revealed in people. Even just so simply within this print, I started to uh, really like this kind of like hierarchy that's forming. There's almost these two puppeteers that are appearing on the on the right hand side. And this was purely coming about just through a monotype printing process with the 3D printer machine in which there was a inked up layer of glass. The printer was attempting to draw this man on the fax machine, but this kind of errors and things start to occur. Um, a small snapshot of the etching needle drawing across the copper plate and some of the etchings that come from it. So the reason I have this here is because this, this piece effectively changed my entire practice and led into the body of work that I'm doing at the center now. Again, there's the man on the fax machine, but there's this, there's this kind of slightly awkward hand, which is almost sighing or wiping his forehead, I guess. And that's just the moment where he was loading his paper into the fax machine. As the 3D printer was drawing over the etching plate, I begin to work into it. Uh, there's, a, I guess, a mechanical error of some sort, also hand interference. And he goes from this man at work to this man that's, I guess, finished work, now tired and wiping his forehead, or even this quite militant sergeant attentive uh, pose. And again, it's using these emerging technologies to start to find these emerging, uh, I guess, aspects of, of people as we're kind of beginning to move in this, this digital and physical landscape. Um, from here, that moves through into the, the ceramic coiling that I just showed you on the machine where I build a mold in the ceramic. I slush the internals of that with wax, which goes through the lost wax casting process into bronze, which is pictured here. Again, another one of the prints. And one of my favorites about this piece was how you have this kind of Jacob Epstein rock drill um, moment where that head that was facing down into the machine has almost got this droid-like quality and it turns inwards. And then again, moving through into, this was my first sculpture cast over a meter tall into aluminium. And again, it's kind of arcing back to these um, these mechanical this mechanical language of I guess um, of, of of the of the machine. Um, so to set the tone for my project at the Centre for Print Research, um, which currently the working title is uh, the Talking Tree, which loosely plays on a fabled story of Alexander the Great in his kind of I guess the epic the Alexander Romance. Um, this is a just this is just a still of him in a particular position where in the story where he's choosing to either conquer the skies or conquer the seas. And in this particular instance, he's going out to the sea into what's known as a bathosphere. Um, 
I got kind of particularly interested in this narrative of him, I guess, because there's this moment where when you see a Shakespeare, you see him in this kind of janky woodcut uh, print, or you see, I don't know, Henry VIII, you see him in this Hans Holbein-esque uh, oil painting. And the thing that was amazing with the Alexander the Great or the Alexander romance was that because he conquered so much of the world, one moment you'll see him in this oriental style, then you'll see him in this kind of illuminated manuscript here. And it's, he almost reached a status of devil, God, Jesus, Santa, whichever he kind of completely surpassed just this isolated um, kind of king or something. He completely surpassed that realm. And even then that's kind of mirrored into this story where he's moving between these realms. And that began to touch a lot on these kind of mystical occult qualities. Um, I was particularly kind of drawn to the way that they spoke of how he was tutored by Aristotle when he was quite young. Um, and he often saw his advice in defeating his enemies, often by like these magical, these kind of magical, slightly, uh, I guess, occult uh, kind of ways. Um, so again, moving back to the machine, uh, this is a robotic arm at the Centre for Print Research. Uh, you can just see kind of the brass plate in the left, in the bottom left hand corner. This is just hard grounded and being drawn into with the steel etching needle, which is mounted to a 3D printed hand, uh, which is spring loaded so that the etching needle can be carried across the drawing plate and drawn. And there's a series of images that are being fed into, that are being fed into this. But my kind of, I guess my main I guess like thesis or, or whichever for this project is that it's the kind of experimentation on the use of the machine as Oracle, as opposed to uh, an accident causer. So I guess in my previous work that I'd highlighted on Just, which is why I wanted to include this is that when the ballerina say fell out of the study of the man on the fax machine, um, I use the word fall out of because in, 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 in William Burroughs's writing, he often made a, it obviously made a, a great use of the cutter. Um, he often spoke about if you cut up multiple meanings and multiple texts and fragments, these different meanings start to almost leak out. Uh, he even spoke sometimes if you cut up the present, the future leaks out. And it's this, it's this kind of meaning again that starts to like fall out that I'm that I'm kind of constantly looking for, as opposed to in the past, I'd always treated it as almost this accidental meaning, as this kind of scientific lab equipment. And it makes perfect sense. Why would a scientist uh, want to designate these, I guess, accidents as caused by a grand designer when science attributing anything to grand designers led to pers persecution for centuries? Um, whereas in this instance, I'm focused on the use of the machine as the oracle. So it would be that it can almost say the ballerina was always present within the man on the fax machine. It's just that the the, the the machine in this instance serves as the the oracle that can divine that truth out of out of him um which i quite like when you set against the backdrop of etching which was initially invented to well i guess daniel hopfer germany um pioneering etching into armor that was its kind of initial use case i guess and in this case i like to see myself as using these starting points of whether it's me on the fax machine or in this instance, which you'll see, I believe, in the next image, uh, me posed as this kind of Roman Emperor Marcus Aurelius style figure. I'm using these machines to try and extract and pull out these kind of meanings, which again, previously I'd saw as a kind of accidental glitching process. Whereas in the work I'm doing at the center, I'm really concentrating on using the machine as this kind of mystical uh, oracle that can divine these meanings. So for this project, I had put together a, a, a romance of some, of some description. Um, and again, it all takes place around these 3D scanned designs of myself. Um, so what you can see here is me posing on an inflatable dinosaur suit as any kind of equestrian statue that adorns many, I guess, town centers throughout the, throughout the UK. Uh, I'm also wearing a, I guess, a, just a 1992 Yugoslavian flag jacket just to kind of enhance this kind of male militant uh, aspects of the of the figure um, and in this particular program the robotic arm which I just showed you will first of all draw myself across the the brass plate 
So that's what you can see here. And you can just see at the bottom toolpath one only. Um, so here the robotic arm is drawing that, like I say, that same image. There's less of a matter of, um, I, it, previously when I've been doing the drawings with my 3D printer, there'd been a huge amount of input on my side in that I will disconnect various motors or I will turn off uh, different connections or whichever, or I'll interfere in a kind of physical aspect just to kind of, I guess, push these accidents. Whereas this, this project has a very kind of, it's, 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 it's quite, um, it's quite pure to the actual mechanical lines that like you can see there's not a great deal of interference here. So it's very much trusting again, this, this divination of the, of the machine. So toolpath one has been drawn here. Uh, the next slide. So again, uh, arcing back to this kind of reference point of Alexander the Great. Uh, so I'll show you shortly, but there's a decision tree that I have put together where it's like, will James, draw James, and then will James conquer the sea or attempt to conquer the sea at least, or will he conquer the sky? Um, so in this instance, you can see toolpath, toolpath one, which is what you've just seen, which is to draw James on top of the dinosaur and you can kind of just see some of the forms uh, below some of the kind of erratic mark making and then in this instance the C is yes so the robotic arm will continue to draw its interpretation by a um, by a curer which I'd use to compress the JPEG down into a relief style STL file um, and then that's that's moved into g-code and across to the the robotic arm um, so here it has drawn uh, those two images over the top of each other. And at this, at this point, I kind of, I almost treat this as, I guess, like the reading, if we were to pull on something else within this kind of occult realm, if we were to go with, say, tarot, this is almost like the card being pulled. Um, so again, this is where James would attempt to conquer the, the sky. Um, <laughs> this is an image of a, a person, a, an outsider artist of some, some description, uh, Gustav Mesmer. Um, he used to make these flying machines, quite ratchet flying machines, and attempt to uh, fly and run around these fields and, 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 and make flights. Um, so again, in an attempt to conquer the sky, it would draw me in the first instance, and then it overlaid this image of Gustav Mesmer in the second instance. Um, Outsider art has always actually kind of been a big, I guess, influential point with 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 my work, um, and you can kind of see it a lot more now with the kind of DIY machines and, and things. Um, but in this instance, it's just drawn me, and then guess that mesmer over the top. And as I was saying, just this isn't necessarily the kind of the divination of the machine. There's no there's no vulnerabilities. Uh, being divined here. This is just the reading. The next process, which is in the next slide, is here, um, which for me is the, this, this for me is the divination process. This is, this is the kind of the moment where we are, we are trying to decipher the tea leaves. We're trying to read the tarot. We're trying to uh, consult the oracle, uh, ultimately. It's this moment where you touch on these kind of phenomenon of, I guess, uh, pareidolia, where you, where you you look for faces in clouds, or you find like I don't know different expressions in tree bark, and it's this kind of moment. It, it's quite surreal in a sense, but like one one up one aspect of myself feels as though I'm 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 effectively like mining these kind of these realms of information. Um, because ultimately these images have been translated into this information of, of literally coordinates, X, Y, Z coordinates, and then back to something visual. And it's at this, at this point where this kind of phenomenon, like I say, of pareidolia is like starts to come into place. Um, these volcanoes start to appear, which may indicate like bad, <laughs> if we were to go with the, the consultation that, that there may be, I don't know, bad, bad energy coming if, if James was to travel into the sky. Um, it could be that these this figure, these figures appear here and they've got this kind of shield that he's wearing and these different wings. Um, and that's ultimately the, the starting point for where the etchings begin to move through the aquatint and etching process and into a, a series of, of prints ultimately. Um, and then 
next slide if I can. <clears throat> and then, so here is my decision tree. Again, so this is a kind of narrative that I put together with the various reference points, some of which from the Alexander Romance, and some of which from, uh, yeah, different, different reference points I've been reading, I guess. And it's at this point that the robotic arm begins to move through this, this narrative. Um, and it will draw different aspects, but I'm I'm quite interested in the idea of the production process actually being used for a kind of variable addition of some description, um, like as in an artist could come to a production house, a print house with a full narrative with a different etching plates with these different narratives and arrive at a kind of six, I think this has got 16 different outcomes, uh, which I find like I'm quite interested in that use case. Um, and then just to kind of, I guess, wrap up with the, actual way that I pull my work together. Um, this was a show that I had briefly uh, just before um, uh, during freeze last year. Uh, so this going to tell the title of the exhibition going to tell my kids this was Marcus Aurelius and again it's this it's this aspect of beginning with this man on the equestrian horse and trying to extract these meanings from within. Uh, but I also particularly like playing on the use of um, so that meme, going to tell my kids, there's, there's endless examples of it, going to tell my kids this was Eminem, going to tell my kids this was the Kardashians, etc. Um, I, I really like that kind of contemporary meme tech point. There's a hilarious one that I found of Marcus Aurelius and I appropriated that into here because there was an etching I made of a man on a horse and he had this kind of dress that started to appear. <laughs> appear. Um, there's this Flemish triptych here that was flown in to be shown alongside the triptych of Prince and then um, this was probably my favourite photo from the exhibition where you've got this marble carved, one of the first, I think it was 13th century, one of the first marble carvings of John the Baptist made with a hand, um, uh, sorry, a hand powered, a mechanically powered drill. Um, previously, it'd obviously been carved countless amount of times, but it was always just hand carved by hammer and chisel, whereas in this instance, it was a kind of drilling that was like hand powered. And this was one of the first ones to, to place that alongside my work of the the, the, the figure in the rock grill, it's made obviously by 3D printing. I quite like that kind of parallel, um, which again, for me, uh, kind of draws quite nice parallels to the, the project at Centre for Print Research, uh, where it's this treatment of the machine, but rather than just as a tool now, it's this, it's this moment of, um, yeah, as opposed to, um, it just being a tool to complete a job, it can almost be consulted now in a kind of oracle sense. And I'm hoping at the end of this, this the print series to arrive at a sort of relationship with the machine in which I can consult it on various decisions or um, ways of making or treating the, the figure within a sculptural and print-based sense. Um, but yes, that's it from uh, me. I hope that was a good.